Here we have set up the solo variant for Seven Wonders. You set it up like you would a three player game with a few small changes. Let's take a look at those changes. Randomly select three wonders. Pick one for yourself and place the others to your right and left. They will be known as the right hand player and the left hand player. Deal out the cards as you would a normal game. Put the right hand player and left hand player decks by their player mats. Place your deck by your mat. Now that we've looked at the setup changes, let's take a look at the rule changes. To start each round, add the top card from both the right hand player and left hand player to your deck. Then, Play a card for each player. In eras 1 and 3, you will play right hand player, you, then the left hand player. In era 2, you will play the left hand player, you, and then the right hand player. On your turns, you can play and choose cards freely like you normally would from the base game. On the right hand player and left hand player's turns, you will use a priority chart to determine which card they will play. Let's take a look at the priority chart for era one. First priority, resource cards costing one coin. Then, yellow cards. After that, other resource cards. From this point on, choose cards which involve paying the human player the least amount of coins, but the order of cards played is as follows. First, look for science cards. After that, military cards if the player is equal or behind the human player. After that, play a card for the next stage of the wonder. And finally, blue cards. Let's take a look at the priority chart for era two. The first priority is any card that can be built for free. This includes resources that are free, but they should be played only if there are no other free buildings available. Resolve ties for the free buildings by going down the priority list. Second priority are resource cards costing one coin. From this point on, choose cards that involve paying human player the least amount of coins. Science cards. Military cards. Blue cards. Finishing the next stage of the wonder. And finally, yellow cards. Let's take a look at the priority chart for era three. Just as in era two, the first priority is any card that can be built for free. Second priority is any card which would improve the AI's victory point most compared to, the, to you at the moment the card is played. This includes paying the player coins for needed resources. Break ties for this priority by following the priority list below. The third priority are guild cards, then science cards, then military cards, blue cards, uh, uh, upgrading the next stage of the wonder, and finally yellow cards. The AI's last option for each era is to discard a card for three coins. The last card of each deck should be discarded, ending the era just as in the base game. Score war at the end of each era, and at the end of the third era, score just as you would in the base game. All right, so what did I like? I really like the mechanic that they set up here. You are, in a way, still playing three decks, but it feels like managing only one. Also, you still get some of that new hand feeling from the base game by getting new cards into your hand each round. I also really enjoyed era one. This is the easiest of the three priority lists to manage, and you really get a taste for the type of game you will have to play to keep up with the two AIs after this first era. 
as you watch this era unfold and you check the future priority list, you can really have some strategic gameplay right from the beginning. What didn't I like? There will be some times where you really have to sit and figure out what is the top priority for each AI during the third era. Even if you narrow it down to what is the really the top priority, you then have to choose between two or three cards from the same priority level. It really slows down what, up until the third era, is a smoothly run AI. The fun of managing your own third era civilization is lessened by the tasks of finishing off each AI civilization. I'm also unsure of the balance. Is there enough balance of the randomness of the cards drawn and the consistency of the priority list? The AI will never diverge from the lists, so they will always play the same. The question is, will the randomness of the cards have enough of an effect on the priority lists for you to really see different strategies play out? Overall, this is a pretty quick plain solo variant. I really like how they manage three hands into one so you're not overwhelmed by all the cards that you might have. It plays smoothly until uh, you have to get to those third, second and third eras, but with the more plays you have, the easier it will be to play through those priority lists. Hey, I'm Hans, and if you like what you saw, go ahead and click subscribe below, and good things will happen for you forever.